Hello. Are we live? How do, you know, how do I know you guys are here and this is working? It seems like the video is like there's a lot of ping because what you can see on my screen right now is something I did like two minutes ago. Oh my god, this looks... Let me talk to... I need some kind of sign that this is working because it does not seem to be working for me. So, you can probably see me now. Just a second. Can you see me? Um, sorry guys, um, we have some technical issues. It's not that I didn't expect them because they always happen But I have to make sure you can hear me before I go So There's pink But you can see me now Okay guys, I think you might be able to hear me and see me at this point. Um, okay, cool. I'll just switch my screen to, to the PowerPoint because what's the point of watching me? I mean, um, so this should... Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. Um, I'll start. I'm just waiting for Franek to confirm that he can see my PowerPoint. Or Anna, my PowerPoint. Live yet. I'll begin. It's so, it feels weird to be talking to myself, even to someone who likes talking as much as I do. Um, I'm still waiting for the sign that you guys can see my screen. Um, and as soon as I get it, I'll just kickstart it. Um, okay, I'm about to start. So guys, hi, uh, I'm Giga from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Um, I work in an NGO called Today is a New Day, where like a group of, it started off as a group of friends who all love internet and who also happen to care about their country. This kind of brought us together and we are like not a digital first, but a digital only NGO. So all of our activities happen online it's like the space where we feel most comfortable and also the space where we have the most knowledge all of us are coming from more corporate backgrounds where we were involved in professional production of digital experiences before um, so this is why our activism is very much digital um, and I titled this webinar uh, Activist Digital Narratives and I'll try to I'll try to come up with like uh, a recipe for a good internet story I know this is not really possible or doable because there's always a specific situation in which you need like a specific special magic sauce in order to make to make it work so there's no framework which would like m work in every situation however um, in years of campaigning for uh, different causes we've learned that some things do repeat and that there, there are some methods to this madness so 
there's probably something I can share with you. Um, so, for example, let's... Uh, you remember like this from the from fairy tales or from childhood, like this bottle with a message. You put a message in and you throw the bottle to the sea and you hope that somehow it will magically find its recipient. And like it's a funny um, thing to look at nowadays in this connected world where it, it's like we're supposed to get messages out there in a much easier fashion. And it seems like that there's nothing we can draw from this picture. However, the thing is that as the Internet uh, evolved, um, the messages around us begin, began to look like this. So, because everybody is connected and everybody has something to say, we're all swamped with messages and information over those happens on every single day of our lives. Every time we connect to, to our social feeds or to our even chat rooms or anything, because everybody is talking, you can't hear anyone. And although it's so easy to send out a message, technically, it's still very hard to make it land. And let's say that somehow our readers did like choose our bottle and did open it and did start giving it attention and do want to read it. Um, we still need to know a couple of things. That the fact that somebody is listening to us does not mean that they will be able to decode our meaning. Um, because this is a good start, but it's just a start. You know, all objects, people, and events are somehow correlated with a set of concepts or mental representations which we carry around in our heads. This means that, therefore, the meaning is always formed by the recipient. So what you think you are saying is not necessarily what people are hearing. This is just something to keep in mind that, like, whichever message you send out, it makes perfect sense to you and it's super simple and very logical, but just because of the fact that you know so much context and so much stuff around it, that for you it's just a short message which is enough to, to form a me the exact meaning you want, but a person which does not share these mental representations, this context and this set of concepts with you will fail to to understand the message in a way you wanted them to understand it. So, like getting someone's atten attention is not enough. Uh, what you need to do is you need to design the message in a way that it like sticks with people. And there are usually actually four, as I see, four problems with messages which occur the most often. They're either too complex, like too difficult to understand, or they are too extensive, which means like too long, or that, you know, that there's this Blaise Pascal uh, quote I really love. It says, I would have written you a shorter message, but I didn't have time. Um, so often the messages are too long, too extensive. Uh, they are also they happen they also happen to be too new or too distant or if you want too abstract or um, and this also happens often because of the number of messages out there some da sometimes they're just too everydayish or too boring if I say so so if I return one step back. Um, when I said that getting someone's attention is not enough to make sure that we convey the meaning we wanted to, this is just a funny picture uh, that this point reminded me of. There's this kid who, who is writing to his mother, this Jack boy. 
He says, Mom, I love you, but I also love me. That's why I left before you could read my grades. I'm with Jack and Danny. So, <laughs> this is just like a, a joke to, to get going, but I just want to, this to stick with you, that like the message you write is not the message that gets conveyed. And uh, what happens at the recipient's part is what matters. So what you think you're saying, what you think you're conveying is not necessarily what gets through. Um, so, for example, sometimes it happens that messages are too complex. And what we need to do, this is, this is the hardest uh, thing to encounter while, while you're designing digital campaigns because you don't want to be like those uh, alt-right-wing propaganda machines which uh, just simplify and dump down everything so they make sure that the narrative is easy enough to stick with everyone. Like if you have some kind of higher standards, you don't want to do it. You want to get out the whole story. You don't want to simplify the truth. But yet, if you have like a co complex bill, for example, to explain, for example, your parliament passes a bill which is like 100 pages long and a bunch of stuff there actually makes sense and a bunch of stuff there is like total fascist nonsense. Um, you don't want to simplify or dump this down or, or just say this law sucks or just say no, this law rules. You do want people to get the whole picture, but you're, you know that they don't have like a day to get through 100 pages. And you also know that they're not paid to do it and they don't even have to care that much. So, for example, I'll just show for every, like, if a message is too complex, if a message is too long, for every kind of issue that I, like, uh, set out in the framework in the beginning, I will show one example or even more from our work to see how we are, like, uh, how we are combating that. So, for example, here we had, we had a very, um, a very non uh, like a law which is not friendly for uh, foreigners was passed in the Slovenian parliament and the government like did not of course like every other government they did not want to to even allow the conversations to begin and they were like saying no we need this because there's so many refugees we need to tighten control on our borders stuff like that and there were people who, who were like bothered by that and yet they were not equipped for the conversation because they did not know everything about the law. So what we did is like after, uh, like after a week of researching and like being out there on the streets and talking to people and like talking, discussing this very law with them, they always came up with some kind of questions. Yeah, what about this? What about this case? But what, pe what about people who come from countries where there's no wars? Though? Are they still refugees? Should we still offer them shelter? Blah, 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 blah. Like millions of questions. Then what we did when we had this like organically crowdsourced bunch of frequently asked questions, we designed a website which behaves like a dialogue. It's like a chat bot. So for example, it starts, hey, what are you doing here? No, no, I'm just browsing. What about you? And then as you scroll, here, here it says, can you help me understand this new bill about foreigners? It's really bugging me because I, I'm not sure what it's about. And it says, of course, what do you want to know? And then as you scroll, the story unfolds. So, for example, oh, so what is it? It's a bill. So you see, it's like a lock, a dialogue. And although like it, it's seriously long because it gets through all the pain points of the bill, um, we had like amazing analytical numbers here in terms of how many people got to the end of the dialogue. Because somehow this forum of, I mean, the way this text was designed, the way it looked like a, like a conversation, not like a legalese document, um, 
it made people it, it was so much friendlier to people that they actually like read the they're used of reading logs and chats and stuff like that so it really worked for people and like about 80 percent of the people uh, only bounced off the page when they saw the last message so if you would just put this in a long form of text like publish an essay you would get much 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 less people who would read through the end while here just because just because of this simple design tweak that it was designed as a dialogue which unfolds as you scroll down and looks like a real chat like you're waiting for a person who's writing you can see this was like a, just an easy trick which which worked well enough that people were able to understand a text which is otherwise very technical and long so we just designed it as a conversation um, so then for example now we said this is like the uh, this was the the complex the message was too complex now for example let's say the message is too extensive so either too long or like structured in a way that it's not fair to leave out certain parts um, if this happens because you know you don't get to choose your message because the message is something you want out and if it's like complex or extensive you should not change the message probably because it serves some business or political goals you should just change the way you you go about spreading this message so let's say we're stuck with with uh, with large quantities of content and you know how what happens with like uh, with uh, like online there's there's huge issue with with people's attention um, and session times on most websites are really short and people don't uh, take a lot of time to like long reads are, are rarely read in the moment when they are first discovered. People usually save them and read them later and stuff like that. So here, for example, we, if it happens that we, we feel that it's important to get people through these large quantities of content, we try to, to make it easier by gamifying it. So for example, um, this is the greatest hits, or you could also say the greatest shits, of Slovenian student political organizing. Um, for example, there was more than 30 affairs in the history of Slovenian student union. Um, it's like people see it, and it's, it's fair to see it like that. It's like a nest for corruption. It's like a place where young Slovenian politicians learn to, to master the drill well enough to then do the same things on the country level. So um, that was this student election and we wanted to show how much bad stuff was actually done by, by this student union because nobody else seemed to... to Everybody was aware that there's issues, but nobody was aware that there are so many issues because like there was a, a legislation which needed which needed to be changed in order to make them um, to make them responsible about their finances. So now they have to report to the to some to some uh, country institution and they didn't have to before. So what we had to do before bef what we had to do here, is that people? We wanted people to know about all of their failures, all of their corruption scandals, and we realized that there's 30 of them. So we really didn't want them to, like, to to see a block of 30 stories because nobody would ever read those. So what we did here is like it's like a really small, simple uh, gamification mechanism. And it's like when you open this graduation hat, um, it flies up. Here you, it shows that you've seen one out of 30, you've collected it. And now you can see one corruption story. And as you proceed, you open new hats. 
and basically you're just collecting those hats. And when you get to collect 30 hats, we get to, you get to do other things. We say, okay, now you know about, you know enough about this. Now we think it's fair that you go and message the, the student government and tell them about your, about your uh, thoughts and stuff like that. So basically it's just a very, very, what I, when I, when I discuss gamification, people always see it like it's coming up with these huge games and like, like game design documents which keep people busy for five hours. No, it does not have to be like this. It can be super basic. It's just a very simple mechanic of collecting those hats. Yet it's enough. It's somehow working. Our brains are, re are wired in such a funny way that somehow... When you see that you're actually collecting those hats, you've, you see that you've collected seven, it somehow makes you want to get to the end of this. And it's like a very basic motivation mechanism. There's no leaderboards, no badges. It doesn't even try to look like a game. And yet, as it counts your, the stories you read as collecting the hats, it somehow makes you stay longer and read more and care more. Um, so, after that, um, okay, I have two more examples of, like, very basic gamification. Um, just look, this is our president, he's burning, can you see? And he's gone. So, the idea here is that the Slovenian president, Borut Pahor, was attending a political show which is called the the roast there's something similar in the u.s the the thing is that some public person gets there and then everybody is roasting him making fun of him and we really thought it's not appropriate for a president of the country to appear in such a show um, it's the very same president who calls himself the king of instagram and stuff like that so we really like believe that he's not behaving the way he should. And then there was this roast on which people were like giving, like roasting him as an old friend, for example. Yeah, when we were kids, he had one beer too many and he was talking funnily, ha ha ha. And this way, they just like turned away from the stuff, turned attention away from the real bad stuff he's done. So what we did here is we made six of his biggest failures and equipped them with gifts and like here is one story about what he did like one of his biggest uh, mistakes and then you can list them and what's the thing here what's gamified here is the fact that whichever of those cards you decide to share Here's a match, and this says, in Slovenian, it says, it would say, um, add to the fire. So whenever you, whenever you are um, sharing it on Facebook or on Twitter, you add to the fire. There's matches everywhere. Whatever you do, you add to the fire. And how it worked was that when the show started on TV... We said, okay, it's not cool that this is like they're, they're making him look like if he didn't do anything seriously wrong. Um, the internet should roast him the way he deserves it. So what we did is we created uh, some kind of like an oven. And now it's done, so you can't see how it was happening. But the, here, how it worked was that whenever somebody shared one of his stories... Uh, it got by uh, the the temperature in the oven increased for one Celsius. So by the end of the show, which was like two hours, that was more than 1,900 Celsius in the oven, and we were like uploading new new gifs for this animation. So f at the end, he was like 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 you can see now, he was all burned out, and people really loved burning their president. Uh, like adding add, adding temperature to the oven, which looks like it, there's nothing uh, relevant going on here. But the fact is that we managed a huge amount of people to read those cards because if you wanted to add more temperature, you had to share another of his failures. So 
this little thing of having uh, people having their share actually affect something on the website like actually for example seeing your president burn it could be something less radical but this really worked amazing everybody wanted to share and by the end of the show um, the TV show the president was already roasted online much harder than he would ever be on TV um, so basically we also use gamification here because what other way was there to tell people about the 12 serious political mistakes or corruption scandals that this guy has done we had to like make a game out of it in order to make people go through it and this one is like not really fun um, it's like a much more serious project but uh, I'll just quickly show it to you this is uh, a means inequality um, and here basically we just wanted to show people the state of inequality in the world and in Slovenia and basically we were when somebody gave us this like asked us to help them communicate this online we realized that there's like a bunch of numbers a bunch of spreadsheets huge data sets and you don't really want people to to like sift through this so what we did we made it interactive in a way that we were always asking questions for example here it says how do you think the world wealth is distributed between the one percent and the other 99 percent so let's say I think the 1% owns 13% of the world wealth and the 87% is owned by the other 99%. So I say, yeah, this is how I think. And then it says, no, actually it's like this and it shows you how it is. And this way, and then shows this is how it was before crisis. And this is how it's going to be next year. And so it's like you bring the data to life in order to to make people engaged so for example here it says please mark three tax havens three countries which work as tax havens so you wanna you wanna do this and for example i'm trying to find cyprus uh, 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 uh. the we didn't get the user experience very well here apparently because i can't seem to find cyprus oh i uh, 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 uh. okay cyprus and then for example i go and choose um, two more countries i think these are the tax havens and then it says uh yeah actually you're not right about any of those these 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 are the tax havens and stuff like that so Every piece of information that we got like in a 40 page document then gets communicated through some kind of interaction. Like people learn much more if they, if what they see is a form of a feedback, not like a static text. So then there's another thing which happens often and that's the fact that a lot of times the message we want to to share or get out is like very it doesn't feel very relatable to the person who's who needs to who needs to get the memo so what we do here i mean what we do in this kind of cases is we try to we try to enable the immersion so we want to create an experience which is immersive enough for people to like truly get it. So for example, um, this is one is called Prostovit. Um, and it's basically, it's the thing here is that the, our, our country, like probably all of the Western countries, or even like all the capitalist countries in the world is swamped by outdoor advertising in a way that it's like even its nicest corners uh, like in mountains and stuff like that are becoming like huge billboards 
and there's not enough people who would like point that out and people are not even aware how worse it's getting like year by year because 10 years ago it was not problematic to anyone and now it's becoming to problematic to some and as outdoor advertising is growing like it's still growing there will be more and more people who will realize how it's how it's is it affecting how it is affecting their landscapes but still like whenever we tried to get that message out it was not really easily digestible people don't really care that much they don't understand why they should care about the outdoor advertising and how public spaces could be like differently designed so what we did here it says premakni kurzon in trimeria vz and it means move the cursor and compare the visions. So, for example, this is how it is now. This is like a reality, realistic picture from Google, from Google Maps, the street view. This is a part of like on the outskirts of Ljubljana, a road. This is how it's now. And now, do you want it to become like this? Do you want these ads? removed and like a place for a bike lane there or do you want more of those ads because you can get that too and like that we showed this to people for from their hometowns from the roads they know every day there's a whole collection so this is how it is today and we were like okay you could have it like that or you can also have it like that and so this is a part of Maribor, an old town in the east of the country by the river. And there's like, there shouldn't be cars because there could be like much nicer place for pedestrians and stuff like that. So we were like, do you want this place to look like this? Or do you want it to keep going in this direction to get even more cars there? Or do you want your square to, to have trucks? Or do you want your square to have benches? Or stuff like that. So there was a bunch of these images. And this was just a JavaScript which opened up like a new one. So this is the reality. This is the bad vision. Like even more cars and more ads. And this is the, the good vision. And like we just wanted people to understand that ur urbanism does matter. That it like really affects the way their lives, the, the quality of their lives. And this was like a very simple tool to, to enable the immersion, to enable people to, to understand what we're talking about and why we believe there should be more bike lanes and less outdoor ads and more benches and stuff like that. Because this way people can really like understand why something is communicated this way. So enough about this one. Um, there is another one which I probably like best, and it's called kura, which means chicken in Slovenian language. And here, what we did is we were approached by the by the organization for animal rights. Um, they wanted us to help them. Um, campaign for the ban of the battery caged chickens so I don't know if you guys know about the battery cages but they they look like this they look like this it's like really horrible it's a jail for chicken and they don't get to even move and they shit on each other and they don't get to fly ever and it's like it's really, it's really, they can't even move. It's really horrible, but efficient way to get your axe. And some of the countries are already banning this uh, way of breeding chicken. Um, so we wanted our government to do the same because it felt like that we're a society which is developed enough to not have to do this to animals. Even if that meant that eggs are f half a euro more expensive because of that. So the thing was that how will somebody now like feel the empathy for chicken? Because, you know, the, like the, the more similar the animal is to you, the easier it is to, to, 
to have affection for it, like to to feel empathy towards it. So, for example, it's much easier for people to care about dogs or cats than snakes. So, chicken is probably closer to a snake than to a dog in a culture where everybody has their morning bra- morning omelets and eggs and fried chicken in every possible way. So this is like, in our culture, much like in your cultures, it's like, it's food, it's not animals. But still, this does not mean that this kind of breeding is something that anybody should like allow. So that's the background and that's what, how we went about it. The, we created a, like a retro pixelated graphics and we wanted to create like an anti-game. It's a, it's a game in browser which says, hi, you are in the space of battery cage chickens which are only living for, their, for your morning omelette. Um, step into the shoes of this hero chicken beat the existential crisis and see how it feels and then it says press enter to continue and now i'll try to i'll make sure that i have sound on because there should be sound in this game okay so it says choose the game mode and you either choose a story or a survival let's say we go with a story and then you get instructions it says move with using the uh, key key uh, key arrows like the keypad um, to lay an egg um, press space and when you lay five eggs you'll get to proceed to the second level so here I am I'm the chicken in the middle I try to jump and I can't jump because I can't, there's like the cage is too small and I want to go to the left there's nothing there, I can't go to the left, the cage is too small. I want to go to the right, I can't do that either. So the only thing I can do is actually poop on my brothers, or I can lay an egg. And this gets really frustrating because it looks like a game, you feel like that there must be something about this game, like it sure is playable, but you don't like a really frustrated because you don't know how to go about it. You can't, you can't go anywhere, you're stuck. You just see that there's like... The only thing you're doing is you're laying axe and you're not really sure what now. And then you lay your fifth axe and we're like, congrats, do you want to proceed to the next level? And you say, of course, I want to go to level two. And we say, sorry, there's no level two for a battery cage chicken. This is how their lives look like. They are just as fun as this game. And you should press enter if you think it's time to act. So then you press enter and then you land on like a classical petition page where we say this should be stopped because this and this and this, you should sign it too. So the message here was like the, all the emotional part was conveyed before people even entered the petition. Um, I think I don't have anything else scheduled because I'm already 10 minutes late. Oh yeah, I do. Oh yeah, I do, sorry. So I hope I'm not too long. Um, so yeah, sometimes peop- the messages are not too complex or too long or not even um, problematic in any other way, but they just seem to be like not interesting enough because of the... Sometimes this happens because there's too much stories in this direction and something is becoming very normal and every, very everyday-ish and you don't really feel that it's okay for this to be a normal everyday story or thing. So in order to, to, to get people's attention when you have to convey like an everyday-ish story, message, um, it's, it always works to put them in, like in a new, different context, like the very same story. So for example, 
this is one case um, with the with tweets of Slovenian politicians. So um, as in probably in most of your countries too, there's been a lot of racist hatred towards the the immigrants. Um, and okay, this is sad, but what makes it even more sad is the fact that like the leading politicians, like the MPs and ministers from the right wing parties are actually like saying horrible stuff about these people. And they've been doing it for so long, like for two or three years now that people are not even alert when they hear something like that. They're just like, it's becoming a new normal. So we wanted to show that this should not ever become a new normal. And there's a text which like talks to these politicians and says, propaganda which translates to you're just one word away from the open Nazi propaganda. So what we do here, for example, this is a tweet of a Slovenian MP, Jan Machnic. He says, more than thousand Slovenians told today that we don't want immigrants. So then you go, you hover the, the tweet with your mouse. And what happens is that the whole site gets this Nazi iconography. You can see the text change alternatia. This is like the Gotica font. And this, tight, this tweet which said before we don't want immigrants now says we don't want Jews, which is Jido in Slovenia. This is how you, get, you give them new context because everybody in Slovenia still remembers, I mean, the, the older generations and it's still like a collective memory which is stuck with younger generations as well, that the last time humanity decided to like hate one ethnicity, it ended up in a very horrible way. And the best way to remind people that this is not the way to go about, to, to go about Muslims or like immigrants from Middle East, is just like to compare them with Jews. And this way, they, people will get the memo. So for example, you go here, it's like another, uh, another MP, he says paradox, immigrants are massively running away from the violence in their country, but they're bringing violence to European homes. And then you go, you, you hover it and it says paradox, Jews who are massively, so you know, we're just exchanging this one word and it really resonated with people and it actually stopped politicians to, to be this direct in hating immigrants on Twitter. They didn't dare to appear on this shame wall because they would know that whenever they would use a word immigrant or, or refugee, we would embed their tweet and change the word immigrant with the word Jew. So for exam, again, it goes, Slovene should, Slovenia should change, so should close its borders totally. No more, no more migrants. And then it would be, it should, close their borders, no more Jews. So you got the point. Um, it gets like, uh, just putting it into a new context brings a whole new uh, chill to the story and they realize how stupid they are. Because for, for, for example, this one, craziness. Uh, Slovenian government will create a center for refugees in the middle of Ljubljana, like in the in a really uh, nearby really close by is there's there's a kindergarten and schools so it would be um there's a center for jews really nearby our kindergartens like you know it's like it gets entirely crazy when you just change one word you see that this could be tweets from the nazi germany but they're from slovenian democratic like not very democratic politicians so that's it, like change the context. And then I'd like to show you just one more. Um, it's actually a video. Um, and here the story is that the, actually the largest Slovenian opposition party um, got their funds for this year's election from, uh, from Hungary and actually from circles very close to Orban. This was discovered by two journalists in Slovenia that some, of, some people really close to Viktor Orban in Hungary are actually 
through their companies financing this Slovenian uh, right-wing party. Um, and like, it was really scary how people, how the media didn't report on this enough. There was just this um, investigative journalist who came up with this and like none of the major media reported on this um, because this party is, I mean, probably they were afraid that they will get uh, in power and I don't know, but however we wanted, we, we believe this is a story much bigger than than it got to be uh, before we intervened. So what we did here is there was this horrible, um, horrible uh, commercial for this uh, party. Um, it was like nothing special, but it was like really cheesy and it looked like really amateur. The production was really amateur and the, the values were like wrong. <laughs> and it's basically you can imagine like a TV commercial for a, for a radical right-wing party that it's not a pretty picture. And the only thing we did here is we created the whole video and translated it to Hungarian. So we found some people on Fiverr or, and stuff like that who recorded the, uh, the, the voiceover in Hungarian. And if some of you speak Hungarian, Hungarian here is not really good because... Um, we didn't like translate it very well, but what we did is, and this is, by the way, this was the video was, uh, is the third upload. First it was removed from YouTube and then it was removed from Facebook because the, that party um, wanted it removed because of the copyright. So this is the third version where just keep spreading it on new platforms because of the fair, fair right usage, we can't really get sued. So what we did here, is basically Holotal már az SDS programról? Természetesen, ki nem tud róla. Mindenki az SDS programról beszél. Természetesen hallottam róla. So we created a Hungarian voiceover and added and kept the Slovenian subtitles which read the same as in the commercial people were, were seeing on TV. So everybody thought that like there was mixed reactions to this and on the end, S -D -S 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 -D -S. The end of this we showed this Slovenia attached to Hungary and then we we showed the message after the video which told the story how Orban is financing this party and how this is like uh, not cool for the country's independence that somebody from foreign like interferes with media the very same way Russians interfered with American elections. Here Hungarians interfered with Slovenian elections. So what was funny here was the way this video was perceived. There was diehard SDS fans who believed that the video is real and they thought it's a good thing because they were like you know, we have a Hungarian minority in Slovenia. Of course, they created a commercial in Hungarian as well. So they quickly managed to find a way why, why this is okay. Then on the other hand, you had people who actually thought that the SDS created that, this video and, and dubbed it to Hungarian because they, they thought that they want Orban's money so badly, so this was like the one part of the audience and like our fans and our followers of course knew it's a parody and all the three groups were sharing it. One group was sharing it like the real, the fans of the party thought that like it's a good thing, look they even have a commercial in Hungarian. Our fans were sharing it, ha ha ha, this could actually be a reality because they're getting their money there. And there was a bunch of people who were just sharing it because they were like, what the fuck? Do you, do you have any idea why, what's this video? And it was like shared more than 200,000 times. It was viewed, not shared, sorry. In just a few days before the election. And this way we actually managed that this became a, a major topic, even in TV debate the last day before the election how they got their finances. So everything we did here was we took that retarded video commercial and created voiceover in Hungarian and we just published the Hungarian version of the ad and everything else happened by itself. We never had to explain 
how they got their money in uh, in Hungary. And, like just putting out this video was enough for the story to get going. So um, I think I should stop now. I mean, I still have some stuff, but it's already I'm already like 20 minutes late. So I didn't. I'll just end here. Um, Take care. I hope I wasn't boring you. Um, hope you didn't get too bored. And if you have any kind of questions, please reach out. My email is ziga, Z I G A, at the yana the pikasi, D G N D dot C. Or talk to Anna or Franak, they can both give you my contact in case you like want to discuss anything further i hope you enjoyed this a bit and thanks for having me take care bye oh sorry i almost uh, I, I only now saw the comments I'll try to answer those right away. Just a second. Uh, uh, where, 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 where are the comments right now? Okay, I just need to look here. I'm sorry. All is well. Thank you. Can you explain how your pro Yeah, of course. All of those projects which I showed you, everything we do is open source. Everything can be portable to any other country. Um, just reach out to us, translate like the chicken stuff or any other, like the altered tweets thing or anything. Just, uh, just reach out to us and we can give you the source code and you can publish your own version of the campaign in your country.